Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a short stop with a short stop. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the government and a little bit about voting. This time of year, you've got the presidential race going on and a lot of other Senate races and House of Representative races and local races going on. And we need to see what the Bible says about uh, government. Uh, then we need to try to see what God wants us to do when it comes to obeying the government. It, one of the only times that I can ever remember in baseball that I saw a vote take place, uh, and it was me that initiated it. Uh, I was coaching at the University of Pikeville uh, baseball team, and we were in the conference tournament. And we were in the game right before you go to the finals. And I still had my best pitcher available. And what I did was I called my juniors and seniors into my motel room, and I said, boys, I'm going to leave this decision to you all. I said, I, I had another freshman that was a, a good pitcher, and I didn't know whether to start him in the game before and save the, my best pitcher for the finals of the conference tournament or to pitch my best pitcher in the semifinals to be able to, to get to the finals. But I told the kids, I said, this is your all's tournament. I said, these, these are the memories that you all are going to be making and you're going to remember them for a lifetime. So I want to give the decision to you all and let you all vote on who you want to start pitching this game. And they voted, and they voted to put their best pitcher up first to get to the finals. And he won the game, and we got to the finals. But they voted on it. And it wasn't that they came in and pushed any kind of a button or wrote anything. They just raised their hands. And it wasn't just one of them. It was every single junior and senior that I had on the team. But what does the Bible say about government? If we look in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, it says, Every person is to be in subjection to the government authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. So God is telling us that we need to obey our government as long as they are doing what is godly. Now let's take something, for example, that do we have to go out and buy lottery tickets? No, we don't because we're not to covet. Uh, do we go out and buy alcohol? No, we don't because the Bible tells us that drinking alcohol is not good and that it's sinful. Do we go out and look at the homosexual things that are going on. No, we don't, because God talks about that in Romans chapter 1. He says it's an abomination to him. And there's a lot of things that the government allows, but that are not godly. So therefore, we do not have to obey or even condone what they do. But in, in Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 21, I want you to listen to what Jesus did. There were some Pharisees that were plotting uh, together how that they might trap him in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are fruit truthful and teach the way of God in truth and defer to no one, for you are, no, you are not partial to any. Tell us, what do you think? Is it lawful to give a poll tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their malice and said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the poll tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. So Jesus said that paying taxes 
is if the government tells us to, then we're supposed to. As long as things are godly and don't uh, misinterpret or misdirect God's word, then we're to obey everything that our government says. But our country, and I, I want to talk to you all out there that are members of the Church of Christ, and you other people that are listening to, I'm talking to you, but mainly to the people that are members of the Church of Christ. Once Bibles were taken out of the schools, once prayers were taken out of the schools, once parents stopped teaching their kids, things kind of started falling apart a little bit. Uh, most of the things in, in our government today that are trying to be implemented are sexually in nature. Uh, you look at the transgender things that are going on. Uh, you look at the many genders, trying to put 20, 27 different genders out there, the pronouns that they want to try to use, the sex operations that they're doing on young kids. Uh, they're doing mastectomies on young girls, taking their breasts off. They're actually castrating little boys. Uh, then you have men and women's sports. You have men in women's locker rooms. You have men in women's bathrooms. Uh, and these things are, I think, a very big part of the way that we have voted in the past. And we can render a lot of these things and make a lot of these things better if we vote the way that God wants us to vote. And I've always heard this from my mom. She said, silence is consent. And it's time for New Testament Christians, I think, to stand up and be counted for and to do it in a godly way, such as on a podcast, such as uh, different ways that we could do it with our social media, on Facebook or with Instagram or just a, uh, on X, but not doing it in an argumentative way. And if we start an argument, then we, we stop. But we try to teach and tell people that we not, don't need to vote the way that somebody tells us or we don't need to vote the way that we think we need to vote, but we need to vote the way that God wants us to vote. And I think if we keep that in mind, we can make this country back on track and make it a lot better place than what it is right now. Many people have died to give us the privilege to vote. They paid the ultimate sacrifice in many different wars that have been fought to give us the freedom to be able to go and mark an X or punch a, a thing on a, a machine and, and be able to vote for the person that we want to vote for. And Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice also for us that we could be in heaven. That's our main goal. Our first goal is to try to get ourselves to heaven. Our second goal is to try to get as many people to go with us as we possibly can. And our third goal, I think, is to try to make the place that we live a better place, a better godly place. So as you're getting ready to get to November, go out and vote, stand up. Don't be afraid to put something on Instagram or Facebook in a godly way, but it's time for us to stand up. And God always wants us to do that, I believe, wholeheartedly. But you New Testament Christians, you members of the Church of Christ, silence is consent. It's time for us to stand up. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.